so all right so the uh, so the last topic was uh, <clears throat> the Euclidean um, dot product um, uh, which gives you the angles okay so that that pretty much all the geometry we care about the distances and the angles and both of them are contained in the in the dot product okay so that's the dot product right there okay so that's the pretty much the whole thing that we care about uh this is it and, and dimensional space and we have the geometry as the algebra obviously as well as of the vectors as well as the geometry of the of the vectors is all here so you whether you go with the norm very easily just just multiply the uh, vector by itself and uh, and then we have also the angle which is uh the formula is uh just to remind you is here uh, the, the vector with the cosine so it matches very perfectly so once again this is n-dimensional okay but it matches perfectly with well, everything we can we we know about uh, about ge euclidean geometry dimension two the formulas are exactly the same so that's the formula dimension two dimension and it's the same thing this is the uh, the uh the common sense of uh, of uh, um, of the magnitude is is when uh, uh, the the two uh, forces let's say are producing the maximum effect when they are aligned. Okay, so so uh, how much effort it takes if you if you think of of the uh, of the uh, magnitude as if the say say a is force, and then this would be the effort for the lack of a better uh, word, uh, the effort of whoever is pulling. Uh, the end to align to forces the very the best uh, uh, the best effect to waste least effort uh, is um, uh, um, so least or effort lost F effort not lost at all is uh, a win uh, a b are aligned aligned meaning meaning the angle and is is zero Okay, so they're pointing in exactly the same direction, not just parallel, but they're pointing in the exact same direction. So that's what the the formula tells us: the cosine when cosine of zero is uh, is one, and then the uh, we know the the Cauchy inequality shows that, that that there is no other other way for this to happen. So how do you I maximize the uh, the uh, that product? And the answer is uh, by by choosing the two vectors uh, to be aligned with each other, which is which then the the effect it produced is the of the two magnitudes multiplied by each other. Okay, so all right. So the next topic is uh, um, <clears throat> is the, the the projection. So we now have geometry, and armed with geometry, we can do some things such as uh, such as angle. And now we we can speak of, for example, projection and decompositions. Okay, so uh, the uh, um, this is the main idea. So if you have motion through uh, in this case, two-dimensional space, then you can split it into two directions. Uh, they are typically perpendicular, but they don't have to be. And once again, that ratio is uh, to reduce the two-dimensional uh, phenomenon into two one-dimensional motions. You, you phenomena, you split, you do projections. Okay, so you literally um, or figuratively project on the x-axis and then project on the y-axis. Okay, so that's that's how we study in calculus. We study motion. Okay, so um, naturally we're not interested in motion here as much as the projections themselves. So you can see here on the right how what it has produced the uniform, which is not not entirely obvious by the way what what the, the how decomposition works out. But you can look look at it uh, on the right here uniform motion, right? Right. So I'm I'm taking the I, I took a video of of the of of. Um, uh, of the of the throw, b b b b throw uh, flying ball forward, okay, and then they decompose into horizontal and vertical, and then horizontal is a uniform. As you can see, it progresses at uniform speed in the in the horizontal direction. In the vertical, I can see the uh, the speeding out of the uh, how it, 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 with time it, it covers longer and longer distance in the vertical direction. That suggests acceleration, right? Uh, we conclude acceleration, and therefore we conclude a force. Okay, force in that direction, not just generally. Well, there is a force somewhere. We we can be very specific. Uniform, no acceleration, no force. Okay, so so the the physics of Newton Newton Newtonian physics comes out uh, 
you just very easily just if we just uh, take the right a uh, right point of view. And now we can have the same thing in any dimension if you want. And so so the, the, the projections then work uh, work perfectly well. And if you think about it, what is this two dimensional picture is is a projection of a three dimensional page, right? So so motion is three dimensional. So if we draw something on the plane, where does it come from? Come from possibly uh, possibly projection of of, of, of three dimensional motion uh, on that plane on the on the screen. It is being projected. So maybe the ball is going in not in the in the plane. Maybe it's going in away from us. Maybe there is a spin. We don't even know. And maybe it does whatever it does. Uh, but once again, the projection is very productive. Operation. So this is what it looks like. It is a function. Let's be clear. So it is the input is R2, uh, the plane, and the output is R. In this case, it's the x-axis. So every point uh, corresponds to the x-axis. You just forget about y. Okay. So so uh, mis 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 um, mismatch of the number of dimensions two uh, becomes one. Okay. So very very simple simple operation really. Uh, the fact, as you can see, is this. So, so you have a bunch of, uh, of uh, things in the plane, and then the projection produces something very simple. Um, the the intervals they all become intervals on the x-axis. Okay, so that's the simplification. And incidentally, incidentally, uh, probably worth mentioning is, and then I go with the with the other one, uh, and um, uh, the other direction. If I add the other direction, then you you can see that uh, maybe like this. Right. So they also will be intervals, and so so then the, the problem with with geometric figures is, uh, as you can see, even though if I have the two projections, can I can I reconstruct the original object? So uh, projection on X on X and projection uh, combined with projection. Uh, on y axis. So, for example, the blue one, I have two. Look at that, that blue. Uh, it has a, a three unit projection on the x axis and the three unit projection on the y axis. Okay. Can, if you have those two projections, can you recover the original? The shape of the original. What? No, say no. No, right? Because because it, you, you say no because there's an alternative shape that would produce the same projections, right? So, for example, a square that is oriented this way, right? So this way. So okay, so like this. Can you suggest a way? That would uh, solve the problem. Just uh, would solve the problem. More projections. The answer is more projections on different places. That's that's why I bring bring it up. It is um, uh, a CAT scan. You know what I'm talking about, right? So uh, so projections are from. Uh, you, you you cannot get inside of the body, okay? You wanna all you have is the view from the outside, and so you throw uh, row, uh, um, some some kind of particles at the body, and on the other side you see the projection or projection shadow, whatever. And then uh, and naturally uh, the, the only two projections won't do, uh, but that's why you have this rotating thing, right? Like this, you, you did a circle. And the uh, body is here, okay. And then the, uh, the 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 thing rotates around him, and uh, we're once again collecting collecting the data, which we do not see. It's all the magic happening. It's the mathematics happening uh, behind the scenes, and a bunch of projections, all the different projections. Uh, you uh, allows us to re re reassemble the data and pr produce a three D image. Okay, so all of these are projections. And you, you just have need a bunch of them because, uh, like we see, even two projections seems, for example, for motion it would be enough, but for reconstructing a shape would not be enough. And so you you need a bunch of projections. And uh, you you can see if the projection is on this line, right, like this, we'll discover that no, it is not a square, right? It is it is a kind of a, it is a square, but you you can discover which way that square is oriented. Right, so so uh, so anyway, so the, the point is, of course, the projection. You need a, a bunch of projection, uh, uh, the ability to project on whatever we want because we might need a lot of them. 
Okay, and then uh, the how we saw the the inverse problem. So the, this is the direct. The reconstruction is uh, is the inverse problem, and they always complicate it. So how do you reconstruct uh, uh, a 3D image from a bunch of, or in this case, a 2D image from a bunch of uh, project projections? Uh, well, the answers can be done, can be done, but we just don't. Uh, concerned with that right now. So projection uh, uh, on the axis is the simplest projection. How do we uh, ultimately the projection would be on other uh, shapes? So we saw already this uh, this this idea. So I'll skip over. So it, when you study motion, that that's uh, you can justify uh, projections to uh, to to look at concentrate on the actual motion where there is motion. There is no motion in the in the uh, perpen direction perpendicular to the uh, to the slope. Uh, which means that, that that kind of decomposition that you see at the, at the bottom is is meaningful, even though the direction down is seems, seems to be the important one. But we we just discard it and concentrate on these two because it makes sense. Okay, so all right, so that's the projection. Then this, if we are projecting on the x-axis, the the idea is very very transparent. It is it is what we're looking for is look at it the multiple of i. Okay, i is uh, is the vector, the basis vector that determines the x-axis. And then uh, and P, the, this is the projection, right? This is the projection, and P happens to be 3i. So uh, so the question is really i is given, and we found 3. So what the question becomes what multiple of 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 uh, of um, of i uh, is a. So a is not a multiple of pi, but the, the decomposition in the horizontal vertical. Uh, gives you those two numbers. So it's uh, uh, in the horizontal direction, it, it is 3i, in the vertical, it is 4j. So the angle is the perpendicularity is, is what, what, what is crucial. So this, this is the uh, projection. Okay, naturally, the, the whole projection, so it, is, it collapses. Uh, if you can imagine the plane being collapsed to, to a line, okay, uh, so that's why, for example, this vector 4, 3 becomes, becomes 3, okay, on the, on the horizontal direction. If you project it that way, it will become 4. Uh, so the angle is uh, of perpendicularity is the most important. So just to, just a quick stop to in the two dimensional case, there is a very simple way to to explain uh, to find a vector perpendicular to the one that we've got. So as you can see, one zero and um, zero one are perpendicular. Okay, so then that, you remember we know that it is it, 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 the dot product gives us uh, gives us nine degrees. One is equal to zero. So dot product is equal to zero. Then I take these. Once again, that product is equal to zero. So, so, so naturally, that's that's. The, but that's that's the way to test it, uh, uh, whether or not uh, the, it produces uh, a, a vector that is the. Uh, the if, if you have two vectors and then you just multiply do the dot product with them, you end up with zero. So, so uh, how do you go backwards? And the answer is is very simple. Uh, you can you, you can actually uh, produce a new uh, vector very easily. So you flip. Look at it. U v is flipped. And then with one negative sign. Okay, so so if you have a vector uv, how do I find the perpendicular? And the answer is once again flip the uh, the the two components and replace one with a negative and the negative sign to it. Okay, so so just just a quick way. That the, the the proof is obviously once you start multiplying, of course they cancel out, and we know that the dot product of zero gives you ninety degrees. Okay. So, uh, so there are naturally two two possibilities. I could uh, it works out with uh, uh, the negative u, right? So, so if you're looking for a perpendicular, you can pick one or the other. Why? Because they actually there are two uh, there are two uh, as we say normal vectors uh, to yours, and so so you can uh, you have the same length. And then you are uh, therefore you can point to either rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Both of them work out identically. OK, so once again, remember this example about about the uh, um, suggestion about uh, about possible uh, if you have only two uh, things to worry about uh, stocks and bonds and maybe the proportion should be two to one. And then uh, which means that the uh, uh, the good uh, investments, good portfolios lie on that, that purple line. OK, so along the vector one, two, giving you proportion one to two. OK, so then if you were uh, the way we approached it initially, we looked at if you have you have your portfolios, uh, you can ask yourself how close. So that's the initially the, the question we, we asked, how close is it to uh, to the uh, to the ideal and the measured distance? 
uh, makes sense, uh, but uh, it actually makes more sense is to decompose. To decompose your, uh, uh, like this, uh, decompose your portfolio into a part that is perfect and when uh, stocks and bonds are in nine degrees in, 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 in proportion one to two uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, and then you know then if you need to you still can can uh, answer the question how close to it because just take the norm of this vector right here and that's uh, uh, that that does it uh, but that that's a more productive way because then you know what roughly what to do right so that that vector over there the blue vector it has to be so either minimized or entirely sold in order to produce that that portfolio that you think is uh, is perfect. So so once again the 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 uh, the, uh, the the idea is that as you can see it's a projection once again but it's not on the x-axis anymore. So this is definitely a projection, uh, but on some line that that it has a particular importance. Okay. So uh, so um, so that that's really what projections are about. And so we need to learn how how to do it. How to do it in general, because in dimension two, once again, knowing the per predict, per pre, how per particularity emerges, I know that my blue vector. So, if suppose we don't have anything, I know that the blue vector is supposed to be perpendicular to the vector. Uh, so, G is the good one, is one, two, and the bad one, B, naturally, is uh, negative uh, two, one, right? We just established that. How do I find a vector perpendicular to it? It's a negative to one, and then and then the the vector that we need to find is is just a, a, a you need you need to decompose my my vector into a linear combination of these two. So once again, the good one uh, multiplied by a number, and the bad one multiplied by a number. Okay, so so once again, you know we'll know the proportion of uh, good and bad in this in this case. Once again, keep in mind this is all Euclidean. So the, once we go beyond algebra, then the uh, the geometry comes into play. We know there are different geometries, and we we have only dot product, and the angles only worked out for for the Euclidean geometries, unfortunately. But otherwise, uh, that's what it is. And and then okay, so so now we can actually uh, from scratch do it by hand. So once again, good vector, bad vector, perpendicular to it. That's that's how bad your your uh, portfolio is. So and so you have to find P and Q and the, the vectors are given. The, the what you're looking for is appears to be seven four. Uh, that's your vector, and the, uh, the vector seven four needs to be represented. Well, we have actually two, five, and six, and seven four as a linear combination of these two of, of, of good and bad. And then it initially turns into once again I'm doing two at the same time uh, 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 re reduces to two linear equations. Right, each, each of them to find P and find a Q. There are two conditions uh, that comes from these vector equations that we're looking at at the top, and the issue of what naturally happens happens twice. Uh, two, two components uh, happen simultaneously, which means that you have two equations, numerical equations, and then you have uh, and then you have. Well, let me put a wall here so these that have nothing to do with each other. And then uh, and then uh, uh, two equations, two unknowns, perfect situation, and then you really. Uh, how you do it makes no, no difference, uh, but uh, these are the coefficients that you, you, I found. Okay, so uh, so once again, the uh, ideal part uh, is 75th, uh, 17 over 5, and the bad part is uh, 4 over 5. Okay, so so and then, then you know that where you are, uh, that, that's once again my, my decomposition. Well, this this one is, is clearly shown, uh, uh, the, the vector 4, 2. Uh, 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 hold on a second, that doesn't look right. Uh, Uh, what is wrong with this picture? So, uh, so my vector is seven four. Yeah, that's that's right. And then I found four and negative two. Uh, so negative two. So that that's 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 a typo here. Uh, the, this vector is seven four. Okay. And then what we have found is is uh, uh, this one. Uh, uh, the, the, this is my g. So it's a three uh, g. Three g. Right. Look at it. G is this one, two, and it is three of them. One, two, and three. Okay. And this, the vector is this. So this will be negative two B. So three G's, the good ones, and negative two B's. That's the decomposition. I don't know. So this is works out. This is this is another type right here. This is actually a three. Okay. Okay.
So, uh, so once again, decomposition uh, is right there because if it, everything is still two dimensional. We can make a picture and then uh, analyze it. Um, if you have a big portfolio, then it's it's it pictures out of the question. And solving the, then you realize that the, these will be also. If you have one hundred, you'll have one hundred unknowns as well as one hundred equations. Okay. So I'll keep that in mind. Uh, so these are just just the basic basic idea. So that that's what uh, uh, what what it uh, m m might happen. Um, um, so you have many. Uh, then uh, so once again we assume that R seven, not just R seven. We assume that this Euclidean R seven. Okay, so we have seven uh, seven uh, stocks and bonds. It, it, it is it's split here into different categories. And there here here there are computations. As a matter of fact, if you uh, take a quick look. A uh, bunch of competition you can carry out once again using the uh, the presumably the um, the uh, uh, Euclidean geometry. Okay, so uh, percentages right here, uh, the weights that it's the same numbers but divided by 100. Right, so uh, just just how much you you include because this it adds up to 100. So if you divide 100, these are the the weights, the uh, proportions. Uh, even percentages of how much each of these uh, instruments is in your portfolio. Uh, but then if you uh, were to do Euclidean geometry once again, then you have to ha have to actually compute the norm. OK, so uh, where did I compute the norm? There is a norm computed here somewhere. Uh, so the norm is not one, right? Remember, you, to do Euclidean geometry once again, this Euclidean, uh, you have to do the squares. So you take these numbers. Uh, well, probably these numbers is fine. Uh, square them and then uh, add them together and take a square root. Okay, so and then that's that's where the norm right here uh, serves. Okay, so so as you can see, then this is the, then what this is a unit. What does what does unit stand for? Why why the unit? The vector divided by its Norm produces what? Uh, yeah. A vector divided by its norm. What's the end result? It's a new vector. What? What? What about it? So this might be. What does v divided by norm of v look like? What does <clears throat> division by a number, multiplication by a number, same thing. So what does it do to the to a vector? Does the scale multiplication do to a vector? Directly shrinks. Okay, so in other words, it points in the exact same direction. It changes its length. Particular, what's its length? Well, this 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 particular one. Length is one. That's that's what unit refers to. Uh, it is it is literally the unit vector in the direction of uh, our vector. Okay. And so it points in the exact same direction, but has a length one. It is, it is remember, the idea of a vector stripped of its magnitude. That's how you, you remove the magnitude from consideration. You divide by, by it. OK, so then you're left with pure direction. And the, uh, why do I care? Because uh, in this context, it makes perfect sense because this V is the advice. OK, so this is the advice. And so uh, it, it advice it just speaks of, of proportions of, of what your uh, you are um, what your your portfolio should be split into. Okay, so and then and then you are to ask yourself uh, how well how well I'm following that device, which has only the direction, which means that the angle between your portfolio uh, rather than distance would would make may map would would make. So I concentrate on the direction of of that device rather than 
uh, percentages. Okay, so the direction of the vector is this, and that if I, I'm taking Euclidean geometry here as as a, as a tool, uh, then then I'm uh, I'm computing the uh, the unit vector in that direction, so that the the, the size of the of the um, of the um, of the uh, of the advised portfolio does matter. Okay, so so then I'm and then I'm concentrating entirely on the angles. And then uh, here I have two portfolios, once again in dollars. And then I, whatever they are, it doesn't matter one larger, the other one is small, it makes no difference. Uh, the angle is the only uh, one that matters. And so and that, now I'm computing using, once again, the nothing, nothing complicated. I would be, I would be computing the, uh, the angles. Uh, and then if we had a formula, so the angles are already taken care of. Um, angles from that product. Uh, so it's done, and then we. But the, that part is done. So you can you can tell how close you are to it, like this. So maybe this might be, or at least my maybe unit be, and this is this is my portfolio. Then the uh, this angle is telling you how far I am from from ideal. So that is done, but but really it is not. Once again, we we want more. Uh, we want more, and exactly what more is is in this picture. The decomposition. Okay, so so what is the decomposition? It, it have, can you have a formula without going into the linear algebra of, of the equation? Okay, so is there a more direct way of computing the, the projection? Uh, and the answer uh, the answer is there is. Okay, so so then once again uh, uh, beyond this, we would do the what would the end result should be uh, uh, if you want more is this what we already did like this. Okay, decomposing my my my. Uh, um, portfolio to the decomposition of good and bad. Okay, so once again, some kind of right triangle has emerged. It's not not too too bad. Uh, this is uh, so let's just look at two dimensional case. Uh, turns out then once we understand two the two dimensional case, we can produce the rest of them just as as well. Okay, so I'm not looking for a multiple of pi. Remember, I started with, uh, but I'm looking for a multiple of b. Okay, so this is a this is a vector and it is a multiple of b. Uh, and um, uh, uh, so, so in other, how much uh, does A protrude in the direction of B? So it looks like 3.5, but potentially, so that would be the answer. So, uh, so that that's that's what we want to do is the vector A is expressed in terms of B by finding a project A's projection P. That's my P right here on the on the line created by B. Okay, so so in other words, uh, this is what we're looking for. Uh, so the P is a multiple of V once again, so some kind of lambda or whatever uh, of, of, of V. And then this one, once we find this one is easy, right? You just subtract, uh, literally subtraction, right? So so the two vectors uh, add up to A, so so that will be just A minus P, but that's easy. Okay, so, uh, so then uh, let's concentrate on the perpendicularity is what it is, because if you take V, look at V is not perpendicular. Uh, to, uh, or rather, rather, uh, what a minus p is not a by a minus v is not perpendicular to uh, to what we are uh, looking for. Okay, so it, ha we, it has to be law just exactly right. As you can see, if it's too short, it's not perpendicular. Too long, it's not perpendicular. There's only one exactly a projection. Okay, so so uh, let's describe it. So before computing, uh, let's let's put forward the definition. So we have two vectors, and one of them should shouldn't the projection on what should never be uh, zero. Okay, so the orthogonal projection that we speak of doesn't have to be orthogonal, generally speaking. Um, uh, but uh, so satisfies the following: uh, the p that projection has to be parallel to v, could be in the opposite direction. It's possible, and then a minus p is perpendicular to v, which 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 we see here. So once again, uh, p is a uh, uh, just a multiple of v, and uh, and secondly, a minus p is perpendicular. Okay, so we utilizing vector algebra uh, very uh, thoroughly here. So in search for an explicit formula, we take these two properties one and two, okay, and uh, and just translate them into into um, into algebra. Okay, so uh, p is parallel to v is simply it's a multiple. Okay, so that's algebraic interpretation, and perpendicularity is the dot product equal to zero. Okay, so literally number one gives me this, number two gives me that. So these are the two properties from which we'll find uh, an explicit formula for, um, for 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 p. Okay, so okay, so uh, all right. So uh, uh, like I said, so we need only we'll need to find k in p from this. Okay, so 
so just algebra, um, uh, it, so division is not an option. It would be nice just, just to, uh, the, from, the, from the second equation, try to extract uh, what, what P is supposed to be. We cannot, but that's, that's fine. We, we, we can still do algebra. And the, uh, that's the thing about the dot product is uh, um, well, we substitute and then expand. Okay, so I substitute the first into the second, so the P is replaced with KV. So that's really our equation. Uh, better to have one equation than two. Uh, so one number which is seeking single, a single number. That's what we're looking for here is K. Okay, uh, and then we expand our, our dot product. Remember the dot product is, um, so it is distributed property. Property of dot product. Okay, and uh, uh, as you can see, I just expanded, and then I move them around, and then v, v dot v is is the um, uh, magnitude squared of v, and that's that's my my condition that now is uh, contains the dot product on the left, uh, magnitude on the right. Okay, uh, the now this is uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the, the, the number one is the vector equation, and to be clear, these are vectors actually. But these are numbers, okay? So once you, you get the numbers, so life is easier, and so we, we can actually divide. And so that, that's what K is. Uh, K is the dot product of V and A divided by the squared magnitude of V, okay? So this is the amount of how, by how much you stretch V to get P. Okay, so for the record, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, so this is the coefficient so if you're looking for P, well, the formula is slightly more complicated because you have to multiply it by B, and that, that's what it is. So, so K is a multiple of uh, K is the multiple of, of, of B that gives us P, and that's that's how we write it. So P is uh, V dot, e, uh, dot A divided by the squared, um, the, uh, the magnitude multiplied by B. Okay, so it's a, it's a formula in the in, uh, uh, vector projection. Then you say it's, sometimes it's called the scalar projection for, for K, the number, and this is the uh, uh, vector projection for, for, for P. Okay. So as you can see, if you look carefully, uh, you realize that it, it, the, the first formula is not as revealing. The one might be kind of a hidden uh, idea is hidden. Now here, the idea is uh, uh, an important idea uh, is, is on display is that the only direction matters. Okay, look at it. Uh, so from over here, I split it and I distribute uh, uh, the magnitude of V uh, to V appears twice, and then V appears also. So here I'm using, what is it? Uh, um, scalar property of dot product. Well, that's what I'm using here. Okay. And then I can distribute V along, among these, uh, the magnitude of V, uh, as denominators appears every time you have a V, we also have a V uh, magnitude in the denominator, which means that the word of these two vectors, these are the, the unit vectors in the, in the direction of V, right? So we know these are or normalization, that's the word I use. So the magnitude of V doesn't matter then, by design, okay? By design, so that, that formula that, that does, does make sense. That, that, that definitely makes sense. So, uh, okay, so if we go with investment advice, then all we have to do is just uh, type in this formula, which is really not, not that hard because the, comp the computations are ele elementary, just uh, not even uh, squaring anything. Uh, just the dot product, remember how the dot product is executed like this, uh, uh, multiplication followed by addition. Uh, so here, here it is. Uh, so just to, it seems like a big one, but but really not. Uh, we already we have reached this point uh, last time. So so the two portfolios, the angles we can compute, and then uh, just one column at a time. You might produce the dot product, uh, and from the uh, the dot product of of what uh, the dot product of uh, v and a one, which is which is what uh, the numerator is uh, v a a one v a two. Uh, that's the numerator, right? This is the numerator. And then, uh, and then, and then projections are are then computed, and then you, all we have to do is divide by the by the magnitude of uh, right here by the uh, magnitude of v, and then uh, and then you 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 done pretty much. Okay, so um, and so well, just I don't want to uh, go too far into it, but this this is what uh, what it is. These are uh, the and uh, that's the summation. Where are my angles? Uh, Okay, so uh, so column eight and nine are the 
uh, completing portfolios A1, A2, column A and 9, and B, that's what we did. We carried more computations. We did the dot product in the, uh, the, these are, I think these are the angles, if I remember correctly, these are the angles between the two. Uh, and, the, and the actual projections, as you can see, are different. Uh, and distances, I just, in case I compute also the distances, and distances, as you can see, actually, the first portfolio is closer than uh, the father than the second, but that's not really what we, we care about. Okay, so um, uh, this is what we end up with. Uh, okay, so if, even though even though the distance, so look at it, the distance from uh, from D, D from A two, look at this. So these are the two portfolios. The distance from A two to the line is longer than the distance from D one, right? You see, it? but the angle is smaller. Okay, so it depends depends on which way you want to do it. You you measure the distance to that per perfect line. That's one way to do it. That's that's in the middle. So these are the distances. Uh, and in the next one, we're looking at the angles. And the relation is different. Uh, the opposite, as a matter of fact. So so the, the blue one is is closer in the uh, in the uh, in terms of the distance, but farther in terms of the angles. Okay, so if it makes sense to you, but that that's that's really not. Uh, not, not the the choice of uh, so there are just too many uh, ways to do mathematics and so so then the to the, the, determine which one is the right one uh, will, will be, it depends on the on your uh, on your situation on what is actually the practical matter that you're dealing with so uh, um, including the the possibility that maybe Euclidean geometry is not really good for a good tool for for this kind of uh, kind of business. So, so anyway, so it's just, just an illustration of, of what that we have discovered. We discovered literally the angles and the, the projections are also visible here. So the, these are supposedly the bad ones that, that needs to be removed from your portfolio to make it perfect. And then uh, uh, even though the, the whole thing is, is seven dimensional, nonetheless, I'm illustrating this in dimension uh, uh, two, just, just to make that point. Okay. So, so anyway, if you just read it, if, if you if you are interested in stuff like this. Okay, so um, uh, so I'll skip this. So you also another topic that you might be interested in the, uh, in reading is how this this uh, applies to motion, and specifically in this motion, it's it's about the work. Okay, the work is actually happens to be the dot product. Okay, the dot product of the force and displacement. Okay, so so if if the, if you had any any physics so on that, that matter, that that's that's what matters. So for example, if the displacement is perpendicular to the force, uh, the work is zero. Okay, so well, uh, look look into that as well. Uh, now that's an interesting one: sailing against the wind. Have you heard of of that idea? So literally, the wind is going in your face, and yet you're moving forward with the sail and nothing else. So the idea is a bunch of projections, as a matter of fact, and so so there's a picture here somewhere. Um, here's the picture. OK, so let's see. Um, OK, so that will use the wind, the gray one, uh, pointing to from left to right. So it's, it's done actually with the, with the spreadsheet. OK, S is the sail. Uh, the direction of the sail is blue. OK, so uh, dark blue. OK, so this this the uh, the sail is this is the sail, I believe. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, the point being is that the effect of the of this of the wind on the on the sail is perpendicular to it. OK, so so uh, let's let's examine if I'm, 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 I'm saying it correctly. So, uh, right, once again, so the sail to, no, hold on a second, sail to one, is it to one? Uh, S sail, S sail, where's S? Uh, S is, uh, no, this, 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 uh, it is perpendicular to it. So this is the perpendicular to sail. No, this is, this, no, this is the sail. This is perpendicular to sail, PS. OK, so uh, yeah, so uh, OK, so my 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 um, my uh, shh, my boat is like this. OK, so so I am I am uh, the I am making a sharp angle. With my with my sail. 
like this. So the wind is, uh, uh, no, we are moving right. We are moving, we are moving again. So this is my ship and this is my sail. Okay. This is ship and this is sail, um, uh, which we'll get later to it. Uh, so, so once again, if that's the sail, PS, PS, so S is the sail is 2 1. So S is, is the sail 2 1, okay? And then, uh, and then perpendicular to sail, that's which way the wind is pushing it. PS, it's negative 1 2. See? This is PS. In, in this direction, uh, the orange uh, arrow is uh, the, the, the wind is pushing the sail. But that's not important because uh, uh, because because what uh, because uh, the it cannot push in that direction because the the uh, the, the because the way uh, the ship is oriented it has a keel and so the keel will redistribute force again. Okay, so uh, so as I, I once again not going to the for competitions but case case uh, so uh, the red one uh, is the white orange. Uh, he is. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, okay, so K is the keel. Uh, which is this is the keel. So my picture is not right. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So I was I was kind of over optimistic here. Um, so we are moving in the, uh, we are moving, uh, it's not that we're moving straight against the wind, we're moving, we are progressing in the direction uh, of the red one, the net effect is the red one. Okay, so so it doesn't matter, we, 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 the keel is actually, this is the ship, this is the ship right here, this is the ship. Okay, so as you can see, the, the point of this is not going straight against the wind, but it is progressing in the direction against the wind. So the net effect of, of, of the of the push of the uh, of the of the wind gray is the red in the opposite direction. Okay, so in if if uh, how is it uh, how is it even possible? You can see it is it actually three projections in a row. Okay, so the the wind is first projected on the on the sail. Uh, from the sail, it is projected on the keel. Okay, and you you cannot move away you, on the keel if it's good enough. You're only moving along the keel, and then uh, and then uh, turns out there's some 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 uh, horizontal direction left from it. So our actual motion uh, is this. The green one is actual motion. So the keel is pointing in that direction, and we are moving in that direction. But you can see that there is a red component of that motion, which is in the exact opposite direction of the of the wind. So, which is which is the point of this? So you that's how you go against the wind. You actually go left, right, left, right, and you are progressing forward. So that's been known for five hundred of years. So if you if you can switch the 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 uh, the sail in the opposite direction, you progress this way, switch exactly. And then progress more and switch exactly uh, the opposite direction of the, of the sail, and you are moving forward against the wind. Okay, so so once again, uh, once again, the the competition is done with uh, with the formulas that we have had. So because, uh, like I said, uh, to find the last one, the net effect uh, aw, which is which is the projection of of uh, of our motion on the direction opposite of the wind, uh, or or just direction of the wind uh, and uh, uh, so that that takes four projections according to perpendicular orthogonal projections and uh, you, you the pictures itself that suggests that it is it is actually uh, totally plausible okay so so look at the, the projection a uh, projection 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 you, you, you think that how the projection uh, of a vector could point in the opposite direction yes if you execute three of them yes you can okay and that's that's what you uh, you see here and once again the projection is sail keel and uh, and then the third one is actually uh, back on the on the direction of the wind. Okay. Uh, so any questions about this?
motion, the keel. Okay. Okay, so that's the motion. And okay, so we're done with this section. And then this is the. See, couldn't merge some changes. Okay, uh, all right. So, uh, so we set geometry aside again. Okay. So that was all geometry. So measuring, uh, we measured angles um, uh, for the Cartesian system of any dimension with the all that information hidden, as we now know, in that simple, simple, very simple. Uh, operation of, of the dark product. Okay, the dark product contains all, all the information, so all of pre measured, uh, pre measured distances. So, but we, we, that we set that aside. So, geometry aside, which means that what's left is back, back to algebra. Okay, so uh, so let's look at the problem that we started with, uh, started with, and we we just uh, take a different uh, different angle. Okay, so uh, so the different angle remember about the mixtures. Okay, so uh, the one dimensional case of mixtures uh, uh, is very simple. It's not a mixture. There is nothing to mix, but the question is still there. So you have a three dollar per pound of coffee, and then you need to know how much you need to get sixty dollars worth of of coffee. And you just uh, you set up uh, your setup is an equation three x equal to sixty, and your solution is simply division. Okay, sixty divided by four, which is twenty. Okay, so in the uh, the idea is then so once we go to higher dimensions, it should be the same. Okay, so setup, uh, which means an equation, and then uh, well the, at least this one we wanted to to translate the setup in a very simple fashion in the two dimensional case without wondering about what the solution is supposed to be just yet. So let's let's concentrate on the setup. The solution is really really simple and. Uh, well, now they're simple in one dimensional case and not so simple in a multi dimensional case. Uh, so let's let just concentrate on the setup. So, so then, uh, so we know already we did the work. Okay, so we have to, for, for the case two, uh, dimension two, we have two types of coffee and the prices are provided two and three. The total uh, cost should be 30, 14 and the total weight should be six. That produces two equations. Okay, and then uh, and then what we do, what we do now? Uh, well, once again, solution is we, we don't care about much. And then I want to recast it in the style of this. So I wanted this. This is the style I, I like. Okay. So uh, um, and uh, we almost did some of that. So let's just uh, do a little bit more. And then uh, um, a reinterpretation. OK, so we put these two equations together and the uh, solution is is uh, that we saw once again, we 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 are we're, we, we're done with that. So that's uh, that's old now. Uh, each line is the equation. We look for the intersection. That's the answer. That's that's fine. But that's not the, the as you can see, there are no vectors here. So you, you can tell that that's probably uh, now outdated. Uh, no vectors. OK, so uh, all right, so what do we do? Uh, let, let's find the vectors. Let's find the vectors in our uh, equation. So these are the two equations. Uh, it's the same two equations. And as you can see, I, they're cut into, into from each other. OK, so what the idea is to uh, to actually think of this as two vectors. So in other words, cut vertically rather than horizontally. OK, so you can see here I, I have two equality signs. I replace it with a single equal to sign because uh, what does it mean for two vectors to be equal to each other? It means that they are equal component wise. So I have a vector on the left, I have a vector on the right. What does it mean that they are equal to each other? The first components are aligned and equal to each other. And then uh, 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 the second one, okay. So we can go back if you want. Okay, so is it clear what this means? Once again, vector on the left. It just it looks complicated, but it's still just a vector. One x plus one y is the first component of the vector. Two x plus three y is the component of the second component of the vector. That's the vector on the left, and the vector on the right is six fourteen. Okay, so if you if in any doubt, let me put the brackets here like this. These are the column of vectors. 
ओके ओके कैन आई डू बेटर कैन आई डू बेटर कैन आई आई बेटर मीनिंग मीनिंग वी व्हाट वी नो अबाउट दैट्स नंबर नंबर वन बट वेक्टर्स दैट वी नो इज दे जस्ट मेड अप ऑफ ऑफ टू नंबर्स so number one uh, vector is like a b or so so we already done that in the end we also use what the meaning of the of the uh, two vectors equal to each other it means that they are have to be if it equal to c d it means uh, a is equal to c b is equal to d so that's the information that the idea of vectors that we just used okay what else do, do we know about the vectors in that is that that is the big deal is the algebra okay so we have algebra on the left here So uh, can we split it? Can we use the algebra of these algebra of numbers that we see here? Uh, can we uh, um, recast them as the algebra of vectors? Is it clear what I'm talking about? So we replace two equal signs with one equal sign. So equality of numbers, equality of vectors. Now I have a similar place, but have two pluses. I want to replace two pluses with one plus. Two equality signs replaced with one equality sign. Now I have two pluses, and I want to have one plus. You see, and I have one plus on the left instead of two. Uh, based on the the idea is addition of vectors. So what are the vectors that are being added? They already visible here. Are the vectors? Well, if you don't see, just uh, like I said, the the idea is very simple: replacing all two pluses with a single plus, like this. Okay, so so then it, it's a, the, the the one I put here is that you have two vectors now. You have oh, one vector now. You have two, but added together. Because how do we uh, carry out addition? That's fact number one about about vectors is that. Uh, they add it together in that manner. So AB plus CD is equal to um, A plus C, B plus D. But what we're really doing is, and why this might be a challenge, is uh, is we're moving in the opposite direction. So we're not adding two vectors. We've done it many times. We are decomposing. Okay, so the, we recognize that there is addition. So in that line, uh in the middle um the uh, there are two additions component one in each of the components which means that you can just replace two pluses of all uh, that in reference to numbers because what each each component is a number and now we have this plus sign one plus sign referring to the plus of the of the vector so it's a kind of a two different pluses and they'll, they'll look identical but they're, they're different pluses you add, add numbers you add you add vectors okay so so these two pluses become one single plus over here So once again, I could put these uh, brackets here like this. This one vector, this the other vector, and this is still the third vector. Okay. A vector using one plus and not two. Oh, well, if you, uh, uh, are you suggesting that we can decompose it differently? Well, the, uh, so uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure if that's the, the, the question. Naturally, the addition can be interchanged. So I could have one x three y plus one uh, y two x. That would be only all also fair, right? But you 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 can you can tell why why did I do it this way and not that way? You see the advantages advantages of what of, of, of the decomposition that they've chosen which is 
in, re in reference to the next stage in this step that we're going to make. You see the difference? Decomposition on the left, decomposition on the right. What's the difference? Look at X's and Y's. What do you see? X and Y's? Up left, the bottom right corner, and then. Yeah, so indeed, so instead of doing uh, intermixing, now I have X's separated from Y's, right? In the, in the, in the decomposition that I've chosen, these X's are separate from Y's, which gives us an advantage. What advantage? What is the third thing that we know about vectors? So what vectors are and how we add them? And how we, we it, it, the equality of vectors is stage number one. Stage step number two is the addition of vectors and backwards. Uh, and the third, what's the other operation? What's the other operation of, on vectors? Yeah, well, multiplication. Okay, so say k times a b is actually equal to k a k b. And now once again, we, whoops, we return it from right to left. And so what does it what does it do to the vectors that we see here in the middle? The fact that X is present twice, what does it allow us to do? Factor it out, same with Y, okay? Like this, okay? So it's actually one, two multiplied by X. And the other one is one, three multiplied by Y. Okay, so it, it, it is literally then, okay, so we, we have, uh, uh, so we use the, we use the uh, the old, old everything we know about vectors really uh, about algebra vectors have been used. We what it means for two vectors to be equal to each other, then the addition of vectors, then scale multiplication of vectors, and we still what we have now is uh, a vector equation. Okay, a vector equation uh, uh, with uh, two unknowns still x and y are to be found, but the, it is a vector equation. So x times one two plus y times one three is equal to six fourteen is what we. Have. We are, we are we're trying to find okay so uh so that that vector algebra comes in uh big time uh big time so uh so what do we call this when we see something like that x times a vector y times a vector what do we call it add it together a combination so we have talked about that a bit, um, so linear combination. So, so because X is unspecified, which means that one two is stretched, and then one three is stretched by different different uh, rates, and they're supposed to adapt to six fourteen. That's what this is. So, uh, so that's 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 the picture. So one one two and one three are these, uh, and then uh, uh, six fourteen is the end result that it's supposed to produce. Once again, if you want to look in the units, it's probably it's important. Six fourteen, and the, um, so the, the pounds in the first component is pounds. The second component is dollars. Okay, and then once again, they're supposed to end up with six fourteen. Once again, the, the six refers to the uh, weight, and fourteen to the, to the cost of the of the uh, of the of the mixture. Okay, so so then literally, I have to stretch one two the red one by coefficient in such that. Uh, and in the one three by another coefficient in such way uh, in such a way that when you add it together then it will produce uh, produce uh, six fourteen. Uh, so trial and error, as you can see, you can uh, do it by trial and error. There is no reference to the original way we solved the problem by uh, making two lines. This is very entirely different. It's entirely different and relies entirely on, on the vector algebra. And as you can see, the uh, if you, but if you don't do know the answer, it is uh, pretty easy to recognize that I I I, I multiply. I actually stretch the red one by four and the uh, the uh, the green one, green one by two, and then then adding them together, I end up with uh, with the vector of, of six fourteen. Okay, so finding a particular linear combination uh, that uh, that gives us the answer. So it is it is kind of a, a moving in the uh, in the um, backward direction. Okay, so so that's one way. So once again, uh, uh, find the right. Uh, linear combination. That's a problem, uh, right? Linear combination. Uh, uh, 
So li literally, if you, if you think about it, it's also a mixture, a mixture of what linear combination is, is a mixture of two vectors to produce the third. Uh, uh, so that uh, two vectors are given, you have to mix them up in such a way to, to end up with the third. That's the problem. Not obvious how to solve it at all, but uh, we will we'll ignore that for now. Uh, but then there's another angle, so that's even even there is a, there is another vector. So we did that. Uh, we did lines and and sets. That's the, the first approach was uh, original approach to solving the problem. The second one is vector algebra. We don't know how to solve it yet, but the setup is is now there. So this 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 setup. Okay, so then this is the problem. And solution is still um, explained. Uh, but there is another approach, and this this is they're looking at functions. Okay, so if we go once again to back to dimension one, uh, that's what we have. We have a function from reals to reals, uh, which is simply multiplication by three, and then uh, uh, so that that's that's my function, and then uh, uh, the uh, we know the output of the function, and we're supposed to find the input. That's what it is. So multiplication by three is a stretch of the uh, of the x-axis. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then what? But we know the output, which just happens to be sixty, and we're supposed to go backwards to find uh, what is it? Is it multiplication by three or anything. So if we know the output, which is sixty, okay, how do we find the input? Okay, we we'll find this. So. What is the correct tool for solving this problem? Uh, flipping the arrow. How do you flip the arrow? What 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 do you refer to if we flip arrows? The inverse. The right tool is the inverse, right? And once you understand that, you know that this is the tool will be perfect for. Uh, for the two-dimensional case, which is way more complicated, right? So this is this is the, uh, the this is now we're going to two-dimensional case, and the uh, the, the function then is is uh, from R two to R two. There are two inputs, x and y. Uh, the uh, the in other words, how much you mix uh, mix the two, uh, how much of each of the uh, of those coffins you put in, and the the, the outputs are R two, also R two, because one number is the total weight, and the other one is the total. Uh, total cost. Okay, so it's a function from R2 to R2, and we are looking for the inverse. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'll stop here. I'll see you guys.